Welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, January the 10th, 2021. Uh, as is our normal fare, we will sing a few songs, offer a prayer or two, and then I will deliver a lesson that hopefully will um, maybe entice us to look further into the scripture and uh, meditate upon it and uh, just uh, be better having heard it than uh, maybe when we went in. And so singing from Songs of Faith and Praise, if you would turn your songbooks to number 76. Seven, six. Wonderful song. How Great Thou Art. What we're going to do is we're going to sing all four verses and then sing the chorus. We'll only sing the chorus one time. All right. Everybody ready? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, and when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art! How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Wonderful. Turn to number 239, please. Two thirty nine. <clears throat> In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. 
good. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. Turn to number 83, please. Eighty-three. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. So good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. Answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. Let's pray together. We thank you, dear Lord, for this short amount of time that we have to worship you and sing praises to your name. At this time, we just offer prayers to you because this is our way of communication. This is our way of staying close and staying in touch with you. Uh, prayer has so many different facets to it. We're so grateful for what we have, dear Heavenly Father. We just pray that in difficult times like uh, these that we've undergone for the past eight or nine months, that uh, we will look at the bright side of things that we would look at the blessings uh, that we have been afforded during this period of time. I ask your Heavenly Father that you would be with those of our congregation or those uh, near to our congregation who are having either health issues or spiritual issues. I pray that you would constantly be with them especially at this time, be with Natalie as she is in the hospital with COVID. Uh, I pray that uh, uh, she will get stronger and stronger each day and uh, may be able to return home and her life will turn to a sense of normalcy soon. We just uh, offer this praise to you, dear God, because uh, you are deserving of this praise. We just ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you will stay in our lives, that you will give us comfort, and that you will make us comfort givers. Help us to have the same servant mentality that your son had, uh, so that we can look to the interest of others uh, in a, a greater sense that we are right now. Be with us through this service. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn to number 346, I think that's the page, 346.
and you'll understand in just a couple of minutes why I chose this is the song before the lesson. 346. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I know his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. Then day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives. salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal alleluias to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Oh, thank you for singing along with us. And uh, I am uh, going to deliver a lesson right now. For those of you who are in our Wednesday night Zoom class, you know that we have uh, been studying the life of Jesus Christ, and we are to the end, literally to the end. And for what I understand, uh, this will be uh, our last lesson uh, this coming Wednesday. We have uh, uh, worked our way into uh, the resurrection of Jesus, over the past few weeks, we've talked about his trial, his crucifixion, and uh, a week or two ago, we talked about his uh, rising from the dead, the resurrection. And with that in mind, this is where I am going to pick up in this lesson. So it's going to dovetail onto our uh, Wednesday night Zoom class lessons. Uh, Luke opens the book of Acts, uh, I think, with a bang. Uh, and he presents Jesus to us as the risen Savior. And so the song that uh, I chose before the lesson was, I serve a risen Savior, or sometimes it's called, He Lives. And, you know, when we think of the words to that song, how, uh, how thrilling the song is, in light of the words that Luke opens up the book of Acts with. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. In Acts 
chapter 1 and verse 3. It says that he presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking the things concerning the kingdom of God. The uh, gist of my lesson, and perhaps the title of the lesson, is that he's alive after all that suffering. Now, the reactions of Jesus' followers are also recorded for us here in Acts chapter 1. And uh, they're recorded, I think, for us to enjoy. You know, we, we marvel at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it's marvelous that he rose from the dead, just as he said he was, he would. But isn't it, if we can take ourselves back some 2,000 years, can you imagine how amazing it was to those that were close to him? Even though he explained to them that this would happen, you know, if someone explained that to us today in, in 2021, uh, we would be hard-pressed to believe. And he told them that he would rise again on the third day. And so some women and his disciples show amazement and joy. And of course, as we read, uh, Thomas uh, he needed a little more convincing, but ultimately believed. In sports, very often, uh, athletes attempt to make comebacks. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Uh, in, in, uh, in athletic parlance, it means someone has retired and, and they think they still have a little gasoline left in the tank. And uh, they return to the field of play. Sometimes uh, it can be construed as a player has a bad year, and then the next year he has a much better year. And we say he's made a comeback. Well, Jesus' comeback made an impact. His was the real comeback. He was alive. He died a horrible death on the cross. He was placed into a tomb, and yet that tomb could not hold him. And he arose from the dead. You know, it is now, we're, we're, we're almost 10 days into 2021. And I think as we look back at the year 2020, it will appear to us as a, as a, a most unusual year. There are all kinds of adjectives that we can use to, to describe it. Uh, the worst possible is that some 360,000 people in the United States have died of this COVID-19 virus. Uh, thankfully, there is a vaccine and, and uh, you know, people can get vaccinated and uh, we can uh, obliterate, hopefully, this horrible disease that has killed uh, so many, so many people. And, you know, like many things, uh, sometimes things like this don't mean anything until they hit us close to home, until a close relative of us gets it, until a brother and sister in the Lord gets it, and they're just kind of hanging on. Or, uh, in the worst case scenario, until someone we know gets it and they die from it. All of that being said, there's a chance that during 2020, we have suffered some. I don't know about you, but I love to go out to restaurants and eat. Do you know we haven't been out to a restaurant to eat in almost nine months? Oh, we've done a little takeout here and there. 
but we haven't sat down for some dining and let somebody wait on us and enjoy the food as it comes to the table simply because we don't want to get in that close proximity with people. Some of us have stayed away from the assembly uh, of our church brothers and sisters on Sunday morning. Believe me, that's a difficult, difficult thing when this is part of what you have done all of your, most of your child life and all of your adult life. It, it leaves a gaping hole there. And believe me, there's a, there's a suffering. I've been watching the services on Sunday morning from our church here at Northfield on the live stream. And, and you know, it, it's good, but you miss something. You miss being close to one another. And for that period of time that I went back, um, it was, I, you know, I did my part and we went through all the phases of worship that we're supposed to go through. But I missed the most important part. I missed the embrace. I missed the hugs. I missed the, the physical closeness that we have with people. You know, we have endured through this, and we continue to do, uh, uh, to uh, go through it. So how have we done with all of this? How have we held up? How, how would the world see us as holding up? Our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, whether the pandemic is upon us or not, are still looking at us. And you know what? We can show them that we're alive after our suffering. You know, and, and it may not be done, and it may, may not be time for this quite yet, but we can show them that even though we have been through turmoil, even though we have been through things that we have never been through in our life, we're still alive. When loved ones die, when people die around us that we were so close to, we, we feel down for a period of time. But we must be resilient. We must bounce back and show people that we're still alive. You know, as a minister, I've preached many, many funeral services. And it took me a long time to realize that the funeral service is geared toward those that are living. It's not geared toward the person who has died because we have no effect anymore over that person. We only have the effect over those that are living and grieving and mourning. And so we explain to them the hope. And what we really explain to them, that after this, after our mourning, after our grief, we are still alive. Now, interestingly enough, Jesus' resurrection from the dead was so, so, so special that it just literally amazed people. And so if we go back to Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, and we reread that, it says he presented himself alive after, after his suffering. Okay, after his suffering, the text says, now, while we can't read people's hearts, or we, like Jesus could, we can't perform miracles as Jesus did, we most certainly can follow his example. And what it says is, by many convincing proofs, I'm reading from Acts 1-3, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking the things concerning the kingdom of God. Notice, and here are the two important things of our lesson this evening. Two convincing proofs. It says, by many convincing proofs, but it talks about two of them. First, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days. Jesus didn't scamper back up to heaven to be back with the Father. It certainly would have been more comfortable to sit at the right hand of God with angels adoring him. But instead, 
he circulated around for 40 days with human beings. He appeared to his disciples. He appeared to small crowds of people. He spoke with individuals. This was after his great suffering. He didn't stay away. He didn't put his tail between his legs, as that term is often said, and go off and sulk somewhere. He didn't say, woe is me. Look, I suffered. Look at all the stuff that happened to me. I'll just go away, for goodness sake. No. He was the risen Savior. And he had to prove all of this. And he did so, as Luke writes, with convincing proofs. He continued to appear to them. He went out to weak humanity, including some of those who actually let him down. And I don't know about you, but this challenges me. You know, when when we look at the world and we look what just happened at the Capitol building uh, just on on Wednesday, the, the turmoil that our world and our country is in, the, there is fear and there is suspicion. You know, we, we don't necessarily know what lies ahead. And it's tempting to crawl into a hole or crawl into bed, pull the cover over our heads and say, all of this will just go away. You know what? This is suffering in the worst way. <laughs> because what this does is... It extends our suffering. And when we want to put it on a higher plane, so many people around us are still suffering because they're trying to navigate their way through life without Jesus. They're navigating not in the light, but they're navigating in darkness. And they're navigating on their own. What they need is to see the risen Savior as those disciples and those people did 2,000 years ago. And we can go to the Word of God and we can read that and we can read it over and over again. That Jesus arose from the dead. They need to see that risen Savior. He lives. He lives. He lives within our heart. You know, we need to to do that. And the only way to do that for us is to appear before people. And perhaps in this year following the dreaded year of 2020, we're ready for changes to happen. And it's exciting for us to think of a non-COVID world, Uh, the opening of fresh opportunities to show Jesus to our community. Now, I still walk up and down my streets. I have still talked to people, howbeit at a distance. I've talked to my neighbors. I've talked to people a little ways down the street that have just moved in. You know, I know them by name. His name is Christian. Her name is Hannah. They have a daughter named Mariah. I found all of this out just by standing out on the street, uh, a safe distance apart and talking to them. I've talked to my neighbor Juan across the street who lost his dad a month ago. Now Juan is only in his 30s. To lose your dad that early in your life is certainly tough. And his dad was a godly man. And now Juan feels like God is watching him. And he wants to put the death of his dad to good use. And he wants to have God in his life. So number one, Jesus appeared to people. Number two, it says, speaking things concerning the kingdom of God. Not only did he go out to people just to show that he was risen, but he explained things to them. In those encounters, he tried to give them hope. In Luke chapter 24, written by Luke, the same one who wrote the words of of Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he touched people's hearts. While Jesus was on the road to Emmaus, he met some people in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. And 
after Jesus appeared to them and they did not recognize him, but they talked to him and they said, you know, our, our Savior has risen from the dead. And, and some words there uh, just uh, uh, are amazing to me. When Jesus uh, left them and explained things concerning the scriptures, they said, were not our hearts burning within us? while he was speaking to us on the road, and he was explaining the scriptures to us. And then they got up that very hour, and they went out to tell others. They didn't keep it to themselves. They were walking with Jesus. Jesus was explaining to them the things of the kingdom, and they said, if he shared that with us, let's go share it with others. Now, as this new year is upon us, you know, a new year is the time when very many of us uh, make resolutions. Perhaps a wonderful resolution for each of us is to read our Bibles more, is to read and meditate on the Lord's Word. And so an easy way for us to do what Jesus did, to speak the things concerning the kingdom, is to read his word so we know what his kingdom is all about, is determine it and then verbally share it with other people. Do something not only to strengthen yourself, but through your knowledge of the scriptures that you can help to strengthen others. Did you read something and have a scripture intrigue you? Did you look at a verse and say, oh, I never looked at that before? When we go into our Zoom class on Wednesday night and we're reading about the resurrection of Jesus and his appearing to all those people, we reread scriptures, we read them that we had read before, and sometimes we, we share a very new angle about them. And we're so enthralled by it that we want to share it with others. You know, when... When someone uh, comes and talks to us and they have a particular problem, we can go back to the Lord's Word and say, that reminds me of something I was reading in the Bible just this morning. Would you allow me to share it with you? We can offer to help people. We can try to make our little part of the world better. And you know what? We can, as we share with others, we can leave people better than we found them, helping others to see Jesus. You know what? 2021 can be a great year for us. And you know what? If it's a great year for us as Christians, it'll be a great year for Jesus Christ. When we can, and when we are able, let's go out and encounter people and speak about the only things that are really true and really lasting. A simple phrase here, a thought from the Bible there. If you're on social media, a positive post here and there. Let's show the world, as Jesus did, that we're alive. Jesus showed that after his suffering, he was still alive. He was ready to meet people, and he was ready to share words about the kingdom. Let's be ready to do that also in our lives. Let's hopefully make people, when those uh, two met Jesus on the road, and maybe... Uh, you know, we'll share something with, with them and they will say, didn't our hearts burn when we heard these words of truth that someone spoke to us? Let's all stay alive. Let's all disregard what we have been through, whatever it may have been, and be willing to encounter and share. And that is the message of the evening and it is yours. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, I just pray that uh, as we move into this new year, 
and even though we're we're still within this pandemic and we're not able to do some of the things that we would like to be doing, that we will find a way to encounter people, maybe through the social media, maybe through email, maybe through a text, maybe through a phone call, maybe through a note. And we can share with them the hope that we have. We can encounter and we can share. Bless us this evening. I pray that some of the things I said may, may go into our hearts and we may meditate on those. We may meditate tonight on how that we can uh, uh, encounter and how we can share. Bless us and be with those that are, are suffering at this time. Help us to let them know that there is hope ahead. And that hope lies in the knowledge that Jesus is the risen Savior and that we serve that risen Savior. Be with us through this evening. Be with us until we're able to meet again, howbeit in person or uh, via uh, the social media or however we do, so that we can have a positive effect on those around us. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. May God bless you all and stay safe. He leadeth me, O blessed thought.